this production is part of the Game Fire Network. Netcast for gamers by gamers. Welcome to Game Fire. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting episode of Tales of Heroes. Video replay review number... Well, what do you want to call this one? We missed 38, so we'll call this uh, 38, and we'll get 39 out later this week as well, hopefully, if we can get that to work out. As you can tell, we are in a new, brand new, high-quality mode here on Tales of Heroes. Higher resolution, better to view at full screen for you guys with uh, big monitors, big resolution monitors. You know, blowing that six, you know, 640 by 480 picture up to a big screen that's, you know, 1280 by 1024 or something. It looks really pixelated. So we, we bumped up the resolution. We've got a new recording method that allows us to do that. So uh, we hope you guys can enjoy this. This is sort of a preview of what the quality will look like when we implement the subscriber program. What I've decided to do is... Uh, you know, the first show in every season, season will be made up by, of, of 12 shows. First show of every season we'll do in high quality, every other show will be in uh, lower quality. However, good news is, the low quality version from now on will still be better quality than the old version that we've been doing for the past almost a year now. Anyways, let's jump right into it. I am Bridger, and with me, of course, is my co-host Vittensby. Welcome again to the program, sir. It's always great to be here, and we have a little bit of a contest announcement. Um, I don't oh, yeah. know if you wanted to say it, but uh, I guess I could just introduce it. Uh, for those of you who have visited my blog, I know I haven't updated it in the past uh, couple days. been really busy, but I did do a little bit of a contest, which was for two keys, and I also got ten keys for the show. And uh, Bridger, why don't you go ahead and just uh, fill them in on uh, how they can get uh, ten of these special... Um, July beta event extra access codes. Yeah, so just to be clear, these aren't keys to get into the beta. The beta is open to anybody as far as I know, as long as you get the keys. Where they have it at File Planet and a bunch of other places right now. I think File Planet is the place you can get it. You don't need a special File Planet account. You just need a regular free File Planet account to get in the beta. And then if you are in the beta and you get these special extra access keys, uh, if I'm uh, not mistaken, you get a an extra map that you get to play and you get to all, all the benefits that pre-ordering the game would give you for uh, World in Conflict we're talking about here. And that's, uh, you know, you get to reserve your name or something like that, Vittensby. Uh, anyways, you can find all the details about <laughs> you, it. You get access to the pre-order. Yes, the pre-order. Which have, ah, yes, new, okay. which have uh, more maps that the regular beta participants can't um, can access as well as... Um, you reserve your name for the August demo and the uh, when the game comes out. Yep. So, like what happened in open beta for COH, people took like Sefa's name, they took Hero's name, they took Fujik's name, they took all the top players' names. Well, that's especially the Europeans because they, they got the game later. They got the game yeah. late, but yeah, I'm sure Vivendi uh, Viven is going to be doing a worldwide uh, release uh, for this simultaneous, so we, it won't be as yep. much problems. But it's always good, you know, that you can reserve your name. So yep. that's what you get. For full details and, on how to enter that contest, you'll can, we'll, we'll be posting that on the Tales of Heroes site. And uh, I think, Vince, you'll probably post that on your blog as well. I'll probably just post a link to that on, on the Tales of Heroes site. So uh, you, all you have to do is e you know send an email to an email address that we've set up. Is it wickbeta at Yahoo or something like that? Yeah, wickbeta at yahoo.com. We'll right. have That's opposing, the same one we front, opposing Fronts keys next week. So yes. stay tuned for that. The, the uh, new beta for Opposing Fronts. That is an exciting yeah. announcement. So yep. we'll, we'll have that for you guys hopefully next week. And uh, quick announcement you might have noticed at the beginning of this show. You uh, saw we are affiliated with a new network, the Game Fire Network, which is brand new. Tales of Heroes is the flagship show for the Game Fire Network. And that's the website that we're working on right now. I'm working very closely with the, uh, the other Game Fire guys as uh, one. One of the founding members of Game Fire, I'm uh, working on the website and getting everything set up. There will be new shows to come in the future from other guys uh, in the Game Fire network. A bunch of them formerly TSN guys. You may recognize some people if you're old TSN listeners. So anyway, enough about that. Game Fire's coming. We're gonna have some new stuff on on, on the website. Uh, I don't, I can't give you an, an ETA on when the website was be up. I'm just telling you, we're working on it. Anytime I got some off off time, I'm posting stuff to the website, to the new website, and I'm getting it tweaked and getting the colors right, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Let's jump into the game, shall we? Sorry about the monologue. We got a bunch of updates that we wanted to make sure all our video listeners did uh, get as well, even if you don't watch or listen to the audio as well. Okay, so the map is Leon, and I know a lot of you are going, "Oh 
god, I might as well just go download it via River Valley Replay. But don't worry about it. This one is supposed to be very good. Gogi and Eniketos, who is under the alias Russia for the win, versus, uh, what is it, uh, Aftershock and Sav Savikin. And they are going to be playing as the Allies, Aniketos, and Gogi as the Axis. So we are at the five-second mark. If you're following along in the replay, let's get it started, and then you can talk to us about these players here, Vittensby. Five, four, three, two, one. Unpause. So let's see. Oops, sorry. <laughs> I'm at the five-second mark. Unpause doesn't work when you're on the tactical map screen. Five, four, three, two, one. Unpause. There we go. I, I, I don't know if I desynced with you, Vittensby. Where are you at? No, I'm there. Okay. I'm good. I'm with you. All right. Okay. I got I got my button on the trigger finger. So. There you go. Finger on the... <laughs> yeah, you, you know what you mean. You know what I mean. We know what... It's, what I, I'm dangerous. Watch out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. But, um, well, uh, just to speak for a moment while this uh, long game gets underway, uh, Gogi just recently got promoted to um, an expert player, which we discussed last week on uh, GR. Uh, Aniketos, uh, absent from ladder for a while, but uh, he's been playing under a Smurf account, Woo! so you can guess what that is. Uh, Savvy's been playing a little bit of uh, Wick lately, started up a clan with uh, my coworker uh, Tim, and they're trying to uh, start that whole pro gamer you know, thing, because Wick's pretty professional now. Uh, anyways, and then Aftershocks, a gr.org game admin uh, not necessarily one of my favorite admins, but uh, overall a nice guy. So, anyways, we got what barracks opening, double barracks opening. Yep. Jeep on the right, which uh, is a interesting start. Um, we I had we had a what, triple savvy? pioneer opening from both the Axis players, and only a double engineer opening from each of the Allied players, which is interesting. And the left Allied player is going straight for that bridge with both of his uh, both of his engineers which, uh, let's take a quick look at the strategic map here, the tactical map, rather. There's a high fuel point on this island over here on the left, on the team-based version of Leon, and that is pretty crucial because that'll give you 50% more fuel income than your opponent for all intents and purposes. Both players have a plus 16 next to their bases. If you manage to secure that island, you've got effectively a plus 16, uh, you know, so that's an additional 50% increase in fuel. So that's a huge bonus, and the allied players went straight for that. And let's see exactly what happens. Because they've got the, they have got the double-built the bridge, as you saw. We had two engineers building that very early in the game. So they got across much faster. The Axis player is only just now starting to build his bridge. So if they can get over there and sandbag off that bridge, the Allies have this left side locked down for basically the entire game. Yep. It's interesting that um, the Allied players decided to go with a really traditional, I mean, build barracks first start. Um, I don't know, maybe that's just, I just play this a lot differently, but I mean, a hardcore NG Pio spam, which is kind of what Axis, uh, the Axis players have done. Maybe Annie is learning a thing or two from me. But uh, I mean, I think that that's definitely a much better opening. I mean, you can see based upon their capping power, they're a little bit late. Um, when I play with uh, Annie on this map, although we really don't like playing on this map, I don't think anyone does. But nevertheless, uh, I definitely just do you know the Pi OP strategy. I mean, OP the two 16 fuels, the 10 munitions, and just tech up as quickly as possible. Actually, a uh, fun thing to do on this is like a demo charge rush. <laughs> um, that's that's pretty fun, but uh, definitely uh, Gogi has the right idea with getting those early sandbags and tank traps up in the north, and now with the bunker, the fast bunkers um, across uh, the way. So I think definitely Axis are in a in a better position um, right now. Allies tend to get the, the, the south, the, what is it, the middle, mid western point uh, VP um, or the northern, northeastern point. It just depends on what they're more focused on uh, early. Uh, it tends to tends to switch between either that or the or the middle. Um, usually, the player in the far right hand corner is a little more variable depending on what he wants to get. Because if you notice, there's not really a whole lot other than the VP in the upper right hand and mid right hand corner. You can tell how. Uh, well. How, Axis awesome. are playing. <laughs> Axis are playing very, very strong on the left-hand side. They've crossed that bridge. They've got a machine gun in there. They've got a flamer 
engineer, which is very surprising to see they had so many munitions very early in the game. There's a lot of munitions, and they captured the munitions points right at the very beginning with their first pioneers, and that allowed them to get a good uh, little boost there with those flaming engineers. It's going to give them a bit of an advantage here, in addition to the machine gunner that is uh, basically allowing them to roast these allies alive. They're not even really watching. Is that squad even going to make it out alive? He's got one guy left. Just barely makes it out. Wow. No, he didn't! <laughs> At the last second. Very nice. They've now secured a small beachhead across this bridge. So now they might set up tank traps and sandbags and barbed wire. Because now they've got a position that they can defend. And as a result, they can use this to launch attacks into the rest. And of course, take this plus 16 fuel, which is going to be very important. If the Allies lose that, then that sort of makes up for their taking of the left island area. And from this position, the Axis can completely cut off the Allies from that fuel as well. So we'll have to see how it goes here. Right now, these, a these riflemen are getting murdered as a result of the machine gun doing extra damage to riflemen that are in large groups. And we already have tier two uh, coming from Annie. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's really that's actually that's Gogi. That's Gogi. Um, Annie laid it laid the mine down. Um, or it's interesting. Partially. I've noticed that he didn't complete it. No, it looks like it's half halfway done. Ah, uh, it's. I mean, it's it's interesting with these early flamers. It seems to be a really uh, strong strat strategy to to get early flamers on on this map. Um, I always thought this kind of favored Axis just a little bit. Um, especially if you're trying to fast tech, uh, because you don't have to build your Vermont quarters, and you can just kind of skip that if you want, um, play it a little bit more defensively, maybe get an early bunker uh, to compensate, or just go straight to Pumas. Um, that's just kind of my my take on the early game. So, but neither one of these uh, players did skip the Vermont, so um, it's it's a little bit more of a conventional game going on. But as you can see, I mean, six minutes in. Operation Six Minute Sherman or Seven Minute Sherman's pretty much underway for uh, for uh, oh, wow, Savikin. Yeah. He's got the tank depot coming out, and uh, looks like Aftershock's a little bit a uh, little bit behind, so to speak. Yeah, but this is actually a good position to put his machine gun there because it's going to be very difficult to. Actually, it's very low on health, so now he's definitely going to have to retreat it. If that machine gun had been full health, full guys, it would have been a very difficult position to try and assault because there's you know, only that one avenue you can go down, and trying to get close enough with grenades is going to lose you a lot of guys, and you can probably move them before you even get close. You're going to get pinned, etc. So, wow, look at this. A triple wall of sandbags and tank traps. He really doesn't want him to bust through there at the north. But, you know, that works yeah. both ways, because he's not going to be able to go to the north either. So both sides sort of get... I mean, in fact, I think it works almost better for the Allies, because they have a victory point that's defended in that northern position by those tank traps. The Axis cannot use that bridge to get to that victory point. They've sort of taken advantage of the bridge that gives them the least ability to take victory points. Now, one thing to note is, is that, speaking of victory points, no one is capped the center victory point. Yeah. Now, I can understand that, uh, that the Allies haven't capped it, but there's really no excuse for the Axis to not have yeah. capped that. Um, I but, agree. Uh, who knows? I mean, it's <laughs> just... <laughs> I'm sorry, what did I man. Miss? Uh, you know how sometimes there's really weird physics that just happen when you move your screen somewhere? Yeah. We just saw the windshield of the Jeep fly straight up at the camera and just disappear nice. behind it. Or maybe it was part of that car. I don't know. The car just fell apart. And just nothing shot at it. It just fell apart. Some boxes just <laughs> fell over. <laughs> the game just randomly had something happen. I'm we sorry. A, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good. We have a croc coming out. Is that a Panzer Command? That's a Panzer Command. Wow. Nice. Wow. Croc's that's, coming uh, out of the both south. Are, and a Comcraft Center. Yeah, we have a croc. Wow, that's a, that's a really early tier four, if I may say so. Yeah. But, you know... Of course, this is a fast teching uh, map. Looks like Gogi got an observation post on the And the fuel, Allies do have what, three plus two observation teams. posts up there, actually. Uh, whereas the Allies have not spent the resources on that. It seems like um, Aftershock and and Savvy are kind of kind of playing a little bit, maybe too traditionally. Um, I don't know how much they they play this map, but at least that croc will be good for busting through any tank traps that. Uh, uh, for instance, in the north, uh, I mean, you can get demo charges or tank traps. Either either one would work to to clear that um, that little field of crap that Gogi builds up there. But, yeah. Uh, 
we'll uh, we'll see what they decide to do with that croc. But when <laughs> if they see like a panther roll out, I we've mean, got a Panzer IV on the field here. The Punage Four, yes, yeah. yes, yes. And actually, uh, I didn't notice we've got the engineer flamethrowering the sandbags. Yeah, that's in interesting. The upper left -hand corner. And there's uh, no you... defense on that island. They're they're counting on that sandbag to defend everything. Yeah, but, I mean, if you recall, that was basically the trick that, uh, what was it, Sefa used against Fujix? I mean, this that was like week five or six, I think, when they had played uh, for the show. Sefa went right side of uh, Armor Company after playing against Fujix. I think uh, left side of Armor just wasn't working uh, for him, knowing the nature of how much resources you get on this map. So he decided, if you recall the game, uh, Fujix went tier three, and it was a pretty long game. Most of the fighting happened around the center, but uh, right side of armor, um, back in the day, this was, I think, 1.2. So, anyways, enough reminiscing. That just reminded me of that, and Relic, you still haven't changed it six months later. I mean, this is like borderline exploit, and I'm just sick of it. Yeah, the, the sandbag thing is just really annoying. Yeah, especially that's really the only entry point, um, and you have the same issue down in the style. Now, what he should be doing is just crushing those riflemen with that Panzer IV. Right? I mean, why can't the access do it if the Allies can do it with every freaking tank they have? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure why Savvy was charging that. Um, there's no collateral damage. Um, that's interesting that Gogi's just kind of kind of sitting there. I really think that they wow. were expecting to see uh, Tier 2. Um, maybe that's just me. He doesn't have sticky bombs. He's I think he was just trying to... Make him sorry? think he had sticky bombs? Yeah, make him th so he'd pull away. But, I mean, with the amount of fuel they're getting, who cares if you lose a tank? Um... I mean, the VPs are pretty standard. Oh, now he's uh, got stickies. Yeah, the VPs are really uh, just been stalemate-ish, and that was kind of unnecessary. Um, it looks like Aftershock kind of went for a cap of the center. Uh, I personally think a we weapon support center on this map, if you go with <laughs> Airborne, isn't actually that bad of an idea, because you really need bunkers, um, especially with how easy it is to tank trap. Was that a firestorm? I think it was. Where was that? Over that on the sucked. left, oh, where there all the is. infantry were. Uh, and we've got, uh, so we've got then uh, Terror and Blitz, because I'm following uh, Aniketos, and he's on. he's got infantry assault team right now. Uh, I don't think no he's, I don't know if he's pulled there. any in. <laughs> well, yeah, no surprise, but still. I don't think he's requisitioned any that I can see here. A we Panther a on the field, wow! This is like the only map where you get to see Panthers like this. Surprisingly <laughs> enough... What happened? Oh, he had some Volksgrenadiers over there. He managed to kill the engineers that were actually building a bunker, not a bunker, a machine gun nest, to stop them from breaking through those sandbags. I'm really, really surprised that Savvy decided to go infantry company. I guess he really felt that this is just going to be a total, total stalemate, so uh, oh, he geez. probably wants to get howitzers, but then why go left side and get rangers and call in a squad? Not quite sure what he's trying to do. That I always preferred uh, airborne and, and armor combo, or even a double airborne uh -oh. back in the day. Those paradropped ATs are really invaluable. Um, also, fire up and being able to harass behind the lines with a uh, tr drop on the other side of the river with airborne is really, uh, really potent. Uh, plus, uh, well, I could list off every ability on the tree is basically what I was about to do, but I won't. It's just everything with airborne is really useful on this map. Yeah, definitely, I can see, especially for dropping onto that island, like you said. Okay, so this panther is tearing shit up right now. It's taken hardly any damage. It's already killed a Sherman completely. This M10 is going to go down in two seconds. Right now, he'd probably do best to uh, to back over here so that he could kill one at a time, but he's still going to kill this, this, this M10 in one more shot. Wow, actually, he's taking a lot of damage from the rear from that other M10. He's in trouble. He's in big trouble! I don't think he's even gonna get the... Oh, wow! Double veterancy now already on that M10. Yeah, that's that's brutal. That yeah, was brutal. At he, least the he M10 should not have let it. them out micro him and flank him like that. Yeah, well, at least the, there wasn't too much he could do. Maybe turn his his body so his rear yeah. was facing the, uh, the busted up buildings. But, uh... It's just interesting. I mean, Savvy definitely has a... It's just interesting he went infantry company. I'm really left side at that. I'm just really interested in why um, when tier four is kind of on the field at the ten minute mark. But you never know. We'll we'll see how that that plays out. 
little variation. Never hurt anyone. You can always catch someone off guard by doing something completely uh -oh. oddball. Sticky bombs, not good. So uh, actually, he was he was doing pretty well there. He flew right through all of those riflemen. Actually, there's only one squad, so my bad. Most of those are engineers. He flew through that rifleman squad, did a bunch of damage to the croc, and managed to get out of there without getting his uh, losing his Panzer IV. So that was good. And the middle point has still yet to be captured. I can't believe it. Just send a pioneer over there, for God's sake. Wow! But the allies have, in a crossing that bridge, now captured the left. I didn't even notice that. Now they are pushing the victory point pretty well. However, we have lost the... are starting to lose the left, but I don't think it's going to last. Because the rangers managed to uh, destroy the Volks that were over there. Actually, the Volks had to retreat. There yeah, it is. Really need to, I think they've they got really, Thompsons. They do have Thompsons. Yeah. They almost got pwned by a Volk squad, a regular Volk squad, from what I saw. Um, but they've uh, they've done their their. Oh my God! That Ford HQ just collapsed right next to the Croc. Killed at least a squad of riflemen that was in there. Might have been two. Where? Uh, next to which Croc? Right where the right where the Panther is. Oh, I see. By the I left see. VP. There was an allied forward HQ there. Yeah, they got a 4 oh, HQ Oh, wow. There. I didn't even notice. I was looking at the Panther. So, it probably was yeah. happening on the screen. I still didn't see it. <laughs> well, oh. he finally capped cap the center, and I'm um, happy that someone, can't tell who, but someone's salvaging um, the, uh, the, uh, I'm... the Panzer Panther four? wreck. Panther. Oh, Panther that is a Panther. That's the right. Center. There was a Panzer yeah. four that died in the center, too, before. But I yeah, hope I an opposing, doing that. I hope in opposing fronts that they change the, uh, the carcasses of tanks so that it's more than one thing. I mean, if you look at tigers, they die. It's all, it always looks the same, right? There's no like, even having like two or different, Ooh. two one or two different variables for what they look like when the tank explodes and the, the car just oh! left over would be interesting. <laughs> that tank exploded two mines by accident by shooting at the, the infantry there and just shot one guy straight into the air. I think those mines, yeah, those are all allied mines that were right here and managed to clear the way without yep. even knowing it. That was pretty yeah, lucky right there. Oh, up gun Shermans now. Versus Bazookas double vet against, panzers. Uh, level two. Level batteries. three vet panzers now. Nice. And level one panther. <laughs> Those Shermans are doing a bang up job against even the level three panzer. Wow, there goes the that building. Level three panzer is in trouble. Oh, is that a howitzer? That's a howitzer. He's trying to get his tanks out. We got a main gun destroyed on one of the panzers, but it's probably going to get away as long as he keeps backing it up. We yep. lost one of the Panzers on the right to another upgun Sherman. I think I've probably said this before, but off-map howitzers do a lot more damage than on-map really, uh, yeah. howitzers, especially to oh, no. tanks. Triple veterancy M10. But yeah, that's true. That's very nice to know. Now he just needs to run over those Pioneers. <laughs> Pioneers laying some mines down. That's a pretty good spot right there. Any Anybody that's advancing to try and take the fuel is going to go right through there. Yep. It's good that uh, Annie is getting the stronger uh, tanks. I think that just kind of complements Blitz a little bit. Panzer IV sucks. Complements <laughs> Blitz um, a, just a little bit better. Obviously more than Terror because the veterancy that you pump in also works on your, on your tires. But... Uh, just interesting overall how to me I, I don't think Panzer IVs suck so I don't think so either because he's using them against tanks they're basically like an a little bit better than an upgun Sherman just a little bit so once the Sherman got upgunned he's not gonna have any chance against those well no he had veterancy so he had pretty even you know chance I think against the Shermans but he was like one Panzer against at least two upgun Shermans over there and an M10 that had double veterancy so you know, he was not going to have a good chance with those two Panzers. Where in God's name is that croc going? That's a good <laughs> question. <laughs> He's like just like, I'm going to own your Volks by making them take seven minutes to retreat back. To the <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> it's got a damaged engine, which is uh, really unfortunate, but uh, that's how it goes. It's interesting that it has such high life. I guess it took a, uh, a bad rear armor hit. Yeah. Um, Unless the sticky bomb missed the Axis tank and landed on its own tank, which has <laughs> never been done before, so... <laughs> now, let's see. This is going to be an interesting battle. you got two flanking Panthers, both at pretty high health, but uh-oh. Some riflemen sneaking around to uh, Sticky, the, the Panther. 
There's really no infantry support at all for these Panthers right now. You got one of the Shermans already. The other two both have um, armor repair vehicles going. I think, unless each of those engineers is repairing a different guy. God, those Panthers are just... one of them go armor dis... company or no? You said uh, infantry yeah. company on one. Yeah, I don't know. It looks like uh, field repairs or no. No, there's two, still two engines left there. That's uh... It looked like field repairs. Is that a bug? Is that a graphical glitch, or is that still healing? Ah, oh, there we go. It's off now. I was on the I don't know. I was watching this panther back away from, like, three squads of riflemen. Panzer IV to the rescue! With the, uh, with the gunner on top, is probably gonna murder these riflemen pretty easily. It's like, I don't care if you got yep. bars. I mean, despite Meanwhile, all the, the best efforts of, uh, the Axis, they're really, really losing this one. Yeah, uh, three I mean, VPs already, down. already. Yeah. For a while too now, but the Panzer looks... IV is doing a very, or Panzer IV is doing a great job right now. Just cleaned up those riflemen. There's an M10 that looks like it's got an engine damage there, so if that Panther moves forward, it's probably going to be able to finish it off. I don't think he sees it right now though. Here's what they see. Man, that veteran oh, no. is just dear God. Yeah, that <laughs> that Panzer IV is trying to hold its own against two. Oh, there's a nice Panzer Shrek or Panzer Faust, sorry, to help out against. This Oh, Sherman backing up into the Volks! No, I didn't do anything. But they're gonna try and run him over. I'm just uh, surprised we haven't seen any Tigers out on the field yet. Um, but with all this veterancy... Tiger, I think, was ju we just got enough points for Tigers. I saw it. Just them. in? Maybe, 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 maybe two minutes ago and I'm just blind. But I see Tigers now and I don't remember seeing them before. Savvy has 800 manpower, so um, either he's saving up for an off-map combat group, which he doesn't have, or he's uh, just doesn't really know what to what to build right now. We um, definitely have so. field repairs now. Let's see what happens. Look at all these tanks that the Germans have that are engine damage. Do you think infantry companies paid off for him at all? Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, all he's got is fast deployment and rangers so far that I can tell. Right? Yeah, and the, how, and the howitzers. Oh, the howitzer. Yeah, that did that yeah. did sort of help. It did a lot of damage to that tank once, but I don't know if it was worth going infantry company for that one engagement so far. Yeah, I... I, I, I think airborne with recoilless mm -hmm. would have been a lot more helpful than those rifles with rangers. Mm -hmm. Or, sorry, the rangers with uh, bazookas. Yeah, and Thompson's. Well, we got a Panther and Panzer IV spam versus the Allies' best efforts, which is not really working out. And I think what's really missing is the uh, airborne pair-dropped ATs. Um, that's really, you know, I, I, yeah, I just that's can't, true. can't stress it enough. One of them, I think, should down-tech to a motor pool just to get some AT guns in there. It'd be a lot of help with the uh, Sherman. Exactly. Yeah, I, definitely airborne would have been, uh, that it would have been nice, I think. Um, but who knows? Bombing run in these cramped streets. And there's... I, I really wish we saw some more Pioneers up here. At first, um, I believe it was uh, Eniketos had a bunch of Pioneers up early, but he lost a lot of them. And so now most of his tanks don't have gunners anymore. They have damaged engines. Do you Another hear a firestorm? Or is that just me? Maybe. I don't... Yeah, it looks like the center got firestorm. There's a rifle yep, squad broken and bleeding there. Yeah, but they still decapped it, so uh, yeah. count the clock is ticking. I don't know, maybe they, uh, maybe the Axis players did tech up a little bit too fast. Ooh, uh, how the heck did they get a Volk squad in the north? They must have gone over the bridge earlier before these uh, rifle squads were there. Yep. Look at all they these allies. decapping tanks, the, though. They should be decapping the VP for sure. I mean, the hell with that strat point. <laughs> but. Uh, I don't know, maybe Axis teched up a little bit too too fast. Now they, I mean, Jesus, do you see that Pio spam? I mean, get a repair station yeah. um, going on. Yeah, I'd really on. like to see a repair station. Oh, no! All the Pios grouped up and a Sherman Blast takes out one from every squad. One more is going to finish them all off. That'll be trouble. But one Sherman bites the dust. Very nice flanking by a Panther. Blocked by a Panzer IV. Nowhere to go. Dead Sherman. Just I hear like howitzers. Yeah. You hear how it's yeah, just... I hear it as well. Oh, it's landing by the Panther on the left. Um, you can see, I mean, a direct shot barely scratched it. Um, yeah, that's the veterancy, though, right? Yeah, it's definitely the veterancy. 
Yeah, I'm really... I did, they didn't OP any... If you're gonna go infantry company, I mean, probably just go straight down the right side, get a howitzer, on-map howitzer or two, and uh, OP the munitions early on so you can use regular howitzers, and then maybe do like an, an M8 uh, suicide scouting run into their base and uh, drop it on whatever buildings they have, like for instance the uh, the uh, Panzer Command. Take Tiger that out. has busted through all of those northern defenses on the road, <laughs> and it's all by itself now. He's just charging into the backfield. I don't know if yep. that's going to pay off. It's sort of risky, but he might just catch a bunch of stuff in the back, kill a bunch of it. I hear more howitzers. I'm really surprised there that the are. Allies have been able to uh, to hold where they're holding. It looks like the Axis are finally kind of out out manpowering them. Yeah. <laughs> out resourcing them in manpower. There we go. And we do have an on map howitzer uh, finally. And where's the blast? And the blast is landing right Around on the, the other Panthers. side of the tank traps. The tank traps in the in the center by the yeah. center BP. Uh, that Volk squad has really done quite a quite a bit of good up there. Uh, we do have a Pershing Ooh, now a to Pershing intercept too, yeah. it. Oh, and that howitzer is going to get owned. Oh man, Tiger. Oh no, the Tiger Ace. Very nice. The Tiger. I'm sorry. The Tiger Ace is the one that came onto the field earlier, and uh, the Sherman was backing away from the bridge. It's like, oh no, two Panthers. Hey, look, a Tiger. Yeah. Oh, great. And apparently it's stuck there. They're just going to be uh, firing, you know, that pan Panthers out. Ooh, wait a minute. Tiger Ace may not actually win if it's got a Pershing shooting at it from behind. Oh, Aftershock needs to turn his uh, tank around right now. Which one are we looking at? Uh, the Tiger Ace. He's got the... Let's go, he's got the Tiger Ace. No, 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 by the Tiger Ace. The oh, Sherman's okay, I'm got sorry. Rear got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had that for a while, I noticed. Wow, infantry company. Oh, buff, buff, buff. Yes. Buff. But it uh, looks like Savage. Rangers need to got... be as worth it as stormtroopers are. Otherwise, why even go infantry company? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, especially on a map and game game like this. I mean, I, uh, without I don't want to get into a huge debate as I, in a rant as I always do about infantry company. But uh, at least you get fast deployment on the. No, actually, you don't get it on the AT gun. Take the scratch that. That would be armor company. Um, AT but, gun doesn't uh, count as an infantry. I thought it counted as infantry. I'm not sure actually. To come to think of it, but I think it's armor. But I mean, th or these vehicle. AT it's, guns it's are either vehicle or or infantry. It's one or the other, but I don't know what it is. Uh oh, yeah, I mean, that tiger ace is in trouble. He's trying to keep it away. Mm. Nice explosion. Bodies everywhere. They're still charging it. These guys just watch their guys, their friends get torn to pieces. They're charging a tiger yeah, anyway. That's out of range. Just got out of there. That's, yeah. uh, that's lucky. Nope, nope, there it is! Is it gonna be a 5%? Yes! Destroyed engine only! Wow. Requires a critical hit, it got a critical, but that critical only destroyed the engine, so now it's gonna survive. It's gonna take like 10 <laughs> minutes to repair the dang thing, but it survived. Tickers yep. are going down again, though. We've finally taken the left victory point. I mean, the acts are woefully underrepresented when it comes to capping power. They're microwaving these Panthers trying to take down the, the Pershing in the backfield. Meanwhile, they've got AT guns to face if they ever try to come back to this bridge. And they've lost the victory point in the north that they had earlier, so it's still looking bad for them unless they get some capping power onto the field. I did see a squad of uh, Knight's Cross sitting here doing nothing. They need to get him towards the middle. Oh yeah, I see the Knight's Cross by the uh, 16 fuel. That's interesting. Wow, the, pa the, the Pershing won the game. Won the battle. The Panthers couldn't chase him. <laughs> Two of them have damaged engines, I think. Yep, exactly. That's yep, what happened. There we go. Level one veterancy. Uh, now he just needs to repair it, but there's uh, two... <laughs> it's funny watching these Panthers just crawling around. Yeah. <laughs> They're trying. But uh, I'm really disappointed with the infantry company, uh, at least in this match. Um, I, I don't know exactly what his plan was, but since these AT guns, like just two AT guns and... I think the Axis strategy kind of folded, at least on the left, and I mean, I don't want to theorycraft too much, but I just think airborne is so ne so necessary, or if you're going to do infantry company, maybe not go straight to tanks, just spam, spam AT guns. Uh, now this not is spam them, but, you know, another spam. Another problem associated with the lack of capping power is he's got 
nothing. All he has to do is send a single pioneer squad over here to decap this plus 16 on the island. He doesn't know that, but I mean that the, the sandbag that he destroyed earlier is still gone. And meanwhile, the allies are having, you know, still a free time with that extra fuel. Yeah, Not that it matters. I mean, how much fuel hmm. do they have? I assume it's like gallons and gallons. Uh, well, Savvy went infantry, um, so I don't know if he's been pumping out tanks as much as Aftershock has, but uh, he's got 740 yeah. fuel right now. So. There you go. What about the Axis? I mean, they're probably pretty low on fuel considering the fuel cost of the Panthers, right? I'm watching Aniketos right now, and he's got the uh, the Panthers, and he's still sitting at 230 right now, because I think they've, they've realized that they're low on capping power, the Axis, because they've been, uh, you know, building some... Uh, Pioneers and stuff, and, and of course the Knight's Cross that we saw earlier as well. Yeah, with all the medic bunker usage these days in ranked matches, I'm just and with all the pios that they're spamming, I'm really surprised they haven't got a medic bunker convert that to a little bit of uh, to, to grenadiers, the pios to grenadiers, and also repair stations definitely. Firestorm on the bridge, very nice timing. That's going to help them out a lot. Killing one AT gun already. And let's yeah, this see, is destroy the, the last one with a nice shot from the tiger there. This is the old school way to play Axis. Like, well, not necessarily old school, but the Blitz Terror combo in 2v2s. <laughs> I love the Pershing just charges through barrels of petrol, gasoline, diesel, whatever, and it just explodes around them. They're like, eh. It's double like, Pershing. Yeah, I nice. saw the double Pershing on the right is, is having their way <laughs> with these double, tigers double. now. Or, sorry. Panthers now. Double pet, yeah, double level uh, three vet Panthers. <clears throat> We're probably gonna see a double veterancy Pershing here in a second if this Panther bites the dust by Pershing. Yeah. God, and I thought I liked to spam pioneers. <laughs> look at how many pioneers are repaired. Yeah, look at tiger. that. <laughs> nice. I'm uh, surprised I mean, we haven't seen a Blitz Tiger. Have we? Uh, it's a, to be honest, I am as well, but uh, that those Pershings are just chewing chewing face with those uh, Panthers. A I triple really vet Pershing now. Because he, he got extra credit for rolling over the dead wreck. I love how you get extra XP for destroying wrecks that are already destroyed. Sweet. Yeah, that's, uh... Seems like the fortune is a bit even right now. Um, allies in the north, Axis in the... Or, Allies in the east, Axis in the west. And, uh, it's an interesting matchup uh, so far. Back and forth for Leon's standards. Yeah, it's really weird because I sort of pictured that there'd be a lot of fighting over the center, but it's almost exclusively been over that left bridge. Yeah, exactly. That's usually how like, my games on Leon kind of, kind of tend to, to fan out. But uh, with... Uh, it seems like neither it was neither of the teams' plan, so to speak, because it remained un, not capped for so long yeah. to go to the center. Maybe they tried to pull a fast one on each other by doing something that's rather unexpected, and they both kind of had the same plan not to really focus. Although, I believe it was uh -oh. Gogi, he got the uh, early bunker there, but neglected to cap it. So, who knows? We were supposed to have uh, Kodachrome uh, come on, as well as Aniketos, to... Uh, Shoutcast is with us, but uh, due to all the recording issues with the uh, new new system, we tried a couple times, we just weren't uh, able to. Maybe we can get a, a follow up from any of these players about uh, about the match. Yeah, that would be in the future. Uh oh, Tiger's coming behind an M10 that's already damaged and a double veterancy M10. Oh no, five percent bug destroyed engine. That means it's pretty much a goner here. Oh no, are you kidding me? Oh man, I thought that M10 was gonna crush every single. Oh, uh, they. Everything but one got crushed. How? That's like 900 <laughs> manpower down the drain. Level 3 veterancy! And he got a veterancy! That's. Overpowered! M10! How much is that? Like 390 manpower, something ridiculously cheap, like 55 fuel. Instantly, <laughs> with no counter, crushes and destroys 900 manpowers worth of Knight's Cross. Uh-uh, no way. That's even worse than a croc at the height of its OPness. I say it right here. That is why the M10 is overpowered. Thank you. In the, in the hands of good players like Savikin this week and uh, 
to give Chrome those freaking like last week all, week I want, all I want is to give the, the infantry some better AI so that when tanks are bearing down on them they dive out of the way that's all I want no I agree with you it's getting a little ridiculous um, to see that <clears throat> all the time but uh, now we're in knows? trouble 50 points I don't know how they're gonna pull out of this one now They've who lost. knows what their what their balanced goals have been for a long time I mean they've been working on opposing fronts probably since the day COH kind of wrapped up uh, maybe even before that so maybe I, I always thought like well why buff the AT gun and then like the Panzer Elite supposed to be really vehicle based right so maybe that's one of the reasons why they did that and then why buff the M10 in the way that they did and why buff the Croc I mean these were obviously bad buffs I think these three buffs with people that really thought that they were like why who was asking for for this except maybe the crocodile it was a, it was underused but I always attributed that to the meta game that it was like why build a croc when you're dealing with puma and stug spam but uh, anyways uh oh who knows? nice well, we trap tiger ace comes onto the field as the tiger is chasing an injured pershing away good night that might just get them back into the game there's a yep. there's a damaged engine pershing in the north the middle is undefended. They just need some Level capping power to pull themselves back Will in. It live? That's gone. Might be a second or two behind. Another you. tiger's on the field. Three, ti two tigers and a tiger ace now. The only one that's damaged is the t the first tiger's pretty low on health here. I wonder what would have happened if they would have uh, went went for raid. Maybe got an M10, uh -oh, uh, M8 Calliope. or two. Hmm. Calliope in the north. Doing some major damage to that Tiger Ace at point blank range. Didn't didn't stop him from killing the Pershing though. And uh, yeah, and that is how you're supposed to use a Calliope. But uh, now that it has no main gun, no one uses it like that anymore. Yeah. Apparently. Well, people still do, but back in the old <laughs> you I mean, forgot back to keep backing that. it up. <laughs> I saw a motor <laughs> out of there. I'm like, it's gone. It, the Tigers can't catch that. And then he just stopped backing it up. They won't chase me. Yeah, I was listening to one of Ahenian's old shoutcasts, and uh, he was talking about. This is going to come know, down to the wire. Look at this. Yeah, he, he was listening. He was listing why the Calliope was overpowered. It was just one of his shoutcasts from October, and it was just interesting to uh, interesting to, wait, to wait, listen wait. to. Wait, wait, wait! You stopped capping the victory point with your Volks. What's going on? You're at 14 points. You've got nothing in the middle. Why aren't you capping the victory point? I think he thought his guys were going to be suppressed by this. Uh, by this machine gun, but it can't shoot out that side of the building. It's a blind spot. <laughs> nice. nice. The, now it can shoot out that small, side of the building, It's the small touches that win you the game. Wow, right? look at just... that. <laughs> oh, wow. Nine points. If they would have just stuck it in the uh, in the uh, in that building, that's just savvy would have put it in the other building that's right there. Yeah. I'm almost sure. If you turn that, turn the camera yeah. around. It's, it's got a, it's got a, it's got a couple of windows there. Mm -hmm. I can't have, believe uh, this this tiger is so alive. on there the tiger. Yeah. But uh, now, nope. I thought there was going to be a sneak attack on the on the south VP there on the left, but it didn't turn out to happen because the tiger's there to stop the machine gun from coming. All right. Uh oh. Uh oh. There's some nice barrage. Lots of rockets hit the tiger that time. It's going to get out without too much damage. I think the reason that they have foregone the capping power is just because the long times it takes. And this is really good micro here, by the way, with the M10, how he's driving around the Tiger faster. Th oh, there goes the body of the poor folks. He's driving around the Tiger faster than the Tiger's turret can turn. And counter micro by the Tiger, he's turning the body of the Tiger to increase the turret turn speed. I just basically. ran over a Volks Grenadier. And will he get it? Um, well, it killed the Pioneer. Will the out-of-control M10 shoot one more time? Nope. Nope. Close. I think you're a little behind me. I paused it for a second to sink it back up. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Losing it. Nope. Nope. He pulled him out. He pulled him out. I thought he was going to make it. We've got... Oh, that was... What is this? Yeah, We've got an M8 armored car sitting in the middle of Axis territory. Just kind of on fire burning. <laughs> I think he's... Oh, he just propaganda ward him. That's Where? my aftershock. Oh, the engineers okay. on the right. Yeah, I was like, why would he retreat yeah. from that? That didn't but, make any uh, sense. I get it. Yeah. That was good. a nice And move. now we have Knight's Cross coming up uh, just to take care of any infantry that's going to gonna cap there. Uh, Axis veterancy for the win, quite yeah. possibly. Really? Don't know. 
nice first ping off. If that first shot from an AT gun pings off a tiger, the tiger's probably got a good chance against it. If that's all it's fighting. And this is why off map combat group there it is, is over is underpowered. <laughs> what did he get? You think he's happy with well I oh, think three I mean, three, three squads of riflemen and uh yeah. mortar. That's not the worst thing. I bet that M eight came from group. that too. Came from a previous off map that we didn't see. Oh definitely. Uh -oh. Not, not necessarily Calliope's that. Calliope's doing I mean, lots of damage, lots of rockets. Oh. Boom! Good night, Saigon! Why the German driver of the Tiger was named Saigon, don't ask me. That's just, I report the truth. That's all. That's, I don't, I just, I don't, <laughs> I don't make this up. All right, so we're actually decapping the middle as they lose the north. They're getting the middle. That's pretty impressive. Yep. Yeah, it seems like the, uh, the fortunes of, of the north... Uh, had paid off for for the Allies, but uh, the fortunes of the South or the West. Well, the first really, stormtrooper squad has appeared on the map that I've seen. Does it does it ever bother you? I mean, this is like the first time I've really thought about it. Like, does it ever bother you that the maps are like, oh, this one's going to be the left, or this one's going to be vertical, or oh, this one will be horizontal, like rails and metals horizontal, and uh, and uh, uh, Saint Hilaire is vertical, and then this one's like on the left skew. So uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's a bit odd to do how to, to how to do that, especially thinking about user interfaces and things like that. Um, you mean the orientation but, of the map and in, in the mini map, yeah. as far as that's concerned? Yeah, that's what I'm, I mean. It's like it's different for every map. No, that adds a little bit of flavor to it. But I'm getting tongue tied. It talking might just be about the angle at which the map is the most easily played when you're viewing it. You know, because it's at yeah. an oblique angle. You're not looking directly top down. There's the first stormtrooper squad on the left. I mean, there were so many mines that were put down by the pioneers on the left. It basically stopped two or three. I think all of the rifle squads that he got from that off-map combat group got killed by mines for the most part on the <laughs> left. That was pretty ridiculous. Yeah, they were all going to decap that point. And they just ran into mine squad. after mine. <laughs> Interesting. Now they just got to hold it for the next. Uh, I don't even God knows how long. But uh, who knows if that's even what they're gonna do? But it, I mean, Knights Cross, Panthers, Stormtroopers with MP44s, Tigers, Level Three Veterans. See, did I forget to mention that on everything, pretty much, except for uh, Annie's Stormtroopers, um, Annie's Infantry, Med Kits. Yeah, that's that's uh, Axis late game for you. That's uh, hard, hard to hard to uh, defeat for sure. Where were the med kits on the storm? Uh, or on the? Um, uh, he popped the it on cross? the pioneer. Actually, you oh, can weird. see it on the left side. Yeah, the little uh, white glow. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Split. I see it now. I mean, you pop a med kit. I guess you're like floating on cloud nine or something. Yeah, I don't know. Something like that. He's putting down more mines on the left. Look at how many munitions these guys got. Four hundred and fifteen. He's got enough for manpower and blitz twice. Oh yeah. Well, I'll take I'll I'll take your bet of four hundred munitions and raise you thirteen hundred fuel. Oh, jeez. Well, that's the point. <laughs> this map has so much fuel, you literally... I mean, it's like... It's ridiculous. You don't need that much fuel ever. There's Remember no way you can spend it fast enough. You're not getting manpower in it fast enough to spend it on that much fuel. Yeah, maybe... Do you remember Rise of Legends? The uh, Vinci had a calculator where you could sell stuff and tweak your economy yeah. a little bit. I mean, even, uh, mo most, uh, I guess, uh, Empire building games, or at least Rise of Nations had it as well. That would be interesting, maybe for a future COH um, expansion. I don't know. Oi, if it's in Monty, friends. we got uh, Americans on uh, on line two. They want to sell us some fuel. They want to know if we have any more men we can send them. Yeah, I don't know. Why? I don't know why that guy turned into Australian. But wow, nice grenade. Good night to all the Rangers on the bridge. I would have loved to see that that bridge collapse after a grenade explodes on it. That would have been cool. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, Knight's Cross coming up behind a mortar. Yeah. That's gone. And then, well, there's another fantastic off-map combat group. But uh, I'm just wondering if... Because it seems like uh, Savvy went for a very traditional infantry company strategy with going left side three points in for to Rangers um, and then switching over to right side going all the way down and then getting an off-map combat group. If he would have just picked one... Or the other, rather than doing it so one v one esque, so to speak. Um, although it, it, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think if uh, and there goes? Oh my God! You see the M10 just get completely owned 
and blow up three mines in the process. <laughs> on Where? The left side. On the oh, on yes. the bridge. I see it now. That wasn't. You I mean the M8? Is what you're talking about? Yeah, the M8. Sorry. Another Calliope coming out on the field. Does he have two Pershings? I think this. I think maybe the uh, the allies is finally. There's a Calliope and a Pershing. Kind of I don't see any. Dry. Yeah. More mines in the left. Flamer engineers trying to kill the pine and propaganda war for the win. <laughs> They're taking the middle with mortars. He's that's what he's using his combat, his off co off map combat group for is to call in mortars that are just squishy and I don't care if you die, go take the middle point. There's a tiger guarding it. <laughs> it actually worked though. <laughs> it got decapped it. <laughs> Here comes a uh, nice Calliope barrage. Now this is a very good use for a Calliope when you know there's a tons of mines somewhere. He blew them all up with the M8, but if you know there's a bunch of mines somewhere, the Calliope will like just clear an entire area of mines. Another great use for the Calliope. Yep. Howitzers taking out a Tiger and a Panther. They don't even notice now. Now they're moving them. On the, on the right side. Yeah. Did you say there was an on-map Howitzer somewhere? There was. It got owned a long time ago. Oh, really? Right by the plus five munitions on the uh, right just south and then just a screen south and then right by the on the allied side of the river. You see the little crater with the dead howitzer in it. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Why did they okay. put it that close? Were they planning on howitzering the enemy base? Well, mm, maybe, but that was when they actually were holding their side. And yeah. Now... I wonder. And now, I mean, getting getting rangers, interesting. Yeah. It just occurred to me, I oh, was yeah. like, wait a minute, we haven't seen any howitzers in a while. What happened to that on-map one? I assumed it was closer <laughs> to their base where you could protect it. And they've lost control of the left island, but like I said, they're floating in so much mu fuel, it's, it's ridiculous. I, I kind of wish they hadn't made 2 plus 16s on, uh, on this map, only because it really degenerates into vehicle wars almost all the time. Yeah. Well, we saw what eleven minute the eleven minute Panther. Yeah. So that was pretty interesting. Yeah. And uh probably like the six minute croc or something. <laughs> yep, Operation Six Minute Sherman. Savikin uh, is Russian or what am I reading here? Uh yeah. Okay, just checking. Wow. That Pershing got owned. I mean it really <laughs> got owned. Oh no, that was... No, wait! Did those rangers shoot the Pershing? Houston, we have a problem. It did. <laughs> the, the rangers killed the Pershing. How did... So be... Was he, he just messing around or what? Does he like attack I... ground on the Pershing? I think he's already kind of admitted defeat. I don't know. Probably some of our uh, Russian-speaking audience knows what that, uh, what that said, but... Uh... I think he probably just kind of was saying his GG right there. Yeah. I'll have uh, Annie or Savvy translate it. Oh, I didn't but, realize Anna Kedos was Russian, or does he just know Russian? Uh, well, he lives in, in Holland right now, but I think he he's Russian for sure. Well, I know he's Russian, so. Right, propaganda, gonna save him this time, or is the tiger going to. Well, it wouldn't matter, anyways. Yeah, this is just the desperation. They've really nah, got nothing on the field here. I think, yeah. I think that uh, one of them stopped producing anything, Ethan. He's just waiting for the tickers to go down. Who, Savvy or...? The right side. Oh, Aftershock. Oh, no, he's just pumping out Pershings. That's what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> so, final thoughts as this game comes to a close. Uh, infantry company on this map. <laughs> I, I yeah. don't know. The game was going well until they started choosing their doctrines, and then infantry company failed him. <laughs> yeah. Well, I still think. I mean, people are. Some people have been saying, "Oh yeah, off map combat group is not as bad as people thinks." Think. I've seen maybe a few games where a, a lucky good off map combat group has has won the game, but. This Still is not a map where off-map combat group is good, though, because most of the no. time it comes with anti-infantry stuff. I mean, mortars, machine guns, rangers, or riflemen are the majority of what you get there. And an M8, which is also anti-infantry for the most part. Every once in a while you'll get an M10, since this map is very heavily, you know, vehicle-based because of the high fuel costs, or the high fuel on the map, 
then uh, you know this is almost always a bad map to go for an you know an off map combat. I mean, this is an excellent map for a double armor. You know, allied war machine over P OP for the win. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, and if you were going to use infantry company, either go straight down the right side or straight down the left side. Probably, I, I'd say straight down the right side. Just getting one or two uh, howitzers on your side. And that could make a difference in this map, actually. Yeah, could could help out, um, especially against you know fortified positions like you uh, you know I believe Gogi rebuilt that bunker. Uh, Howitzer is really good against that. Um, but yeah, I think either like you were saying, like double armor or double airborne or armor airborne for me at least would be uh, would be what I've always done and what I would I prefer to do. Uh, they were down what, probably forty to five hundred or something, and they uh, came yeah. back. So that's pretty impressive. Indeed. The enemy yeah, they're just. This is. It's all over, but the shouting. Yep. And and watching the tiger just obliterate things too. Everything in one shot, and the last few propaganda wars. But, uh, Made for an interesting replay. That's, that's you know, sure. I think the but lack of stormtroopers probably helped them. It didn't drop any Panzer Shreks for them to use. <laughs> yeah, I definitely for the Axis side, repair bunkers and uh, medic bunkers. At least in the mid mid to late game, I would have said that would have been great instead of having you know 35 times eight or whatever. Probably pioneers, whatever. Whatever they made, it was probably somewhere around 200 pioneers. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the Axis were fighting around this VP on the left here for so long. If they'd had, you know, a, a, a repair station, a repair bunker back here, all those times they retreated, it would have been really nice and saved a lot of manpower, like you said, on the pioneers. And a medic bunker, even if they built the pioneers, would have given them the manpower back in form of uh, grenadiers. I'm really digging this uh, this V that I don't know who's building it in the center, but if you look at the VP... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that matters, though. I'm pretty sure you can still take the VP. You just have to be close enough to it. You don't have to touch it. Yeah, yeah those Calliope's were uh, well well used. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Veterancy... Uh, oh, it's 9-9. Wow. It's tied. Never mind. <laughs> just thought I'd point that out temporarily. Because it's going to be gone in two seconds. And that's the game! Very, very crazy game on Leon. It's actually an entertaining game on Leon, which was surprising, I thought. Yeah, I agree. It was entertaining. Uh, it's kind of like any map that's like this. It does The front, apparently, doesn't change that much, but uh, what you're fighting over is mainly the VPs rather than, than resources, yep. um, rather or rather than the combination of VPs and resources. It seems like mostly you're just fighting over VPs on this, so it's it's a different change of pace map, but I guess I was just surprised that the center wasn't the point, the major point of contention, um, but uh, that was yeah. kind of a that was kind of interesting. interesting. That probably made it more interesting, because if the center was the point of contention, they would have blown both bridges or whatever. I think both sides recognized that if I blow this bridge, it is going to stop my enemy from coming across it, but it also stops me from coming across it. So, I mean, if the bridge is up, it gives both both sides options. If the bridge is down, it takes away options from both sides. So both sides sort of made a conscious, you know, decision that the strategy that we're involved with is going to use lots of options, so I'm not going to want to destroy this bridge, and I hope the enemy doesn't, you know, sort of a thing. So. Yeah, and who said tier 1 to 4 doesn't work? <laughs> no, on, a, on a map where you can get, you know, what would it be, uh, plus f uh, 52 fuel in the first three minutes of the game, then, yeah, tier one to four works. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe maybe on Leon. Yeah. But just probably everything works, except Infantry Company on Leon. You know, so. this is like the, the new, old... <laughs> this is the new old point du hoc because <laughs> of because of the fuel costs or the fuel the fuel points the fuel points all right I was all right well yeah I mean, point du hoc we got to get a, another replay on that yeah that's that was that was pretty map. cool I like the new the new point du hoc all right so that's gonna be it I think for Tales of Heroes number thirty eight now hosted again on the Gamefire Network website new features all kinds of great stuff coming soon we hope you appreciate the high quality that this is uh, being presented in, and uh, we 
will hopefully get you a lot more of that where this came, a lot more of this where that came from. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, thanks guys for tuning in. Send us feedback uh, and questions and comments for the audio show. Tales of at GameFire.com. T-A-L-E-S at O-F at GameFire.com. Also, your replays are greatly appreciated. We have a good supply of 1.7 replays. Keep them coming, though. We're hopefully going to do a user-submitted Rails and Metal next week. I'm going to be looking through the different ones. So you've still got time. Send in your Rails and Metal. Uh, unless we do that this week as a makeup for next week. I don't know. Just send in replays. It's good time. Tales of at GameFire.com. I am Bridger for Vittensby. Thank you guys for tuning in. Have a great night or day or morning or early afternoon, whatever it is.